And for more on this move by Turkey and what its role might be in the anti-ISIL coalition, we're joined by Fevzi Bilgin. He's an expert on Turkish politics and executive director of the Rethink Institute, a research institution here in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the show. Uh, as we heard in the report, you know, this vote was overwhelmingly in support of military action against ISIL. So what does this signify? Does it come from international pressure or was there always a plan to join this coalition? Uh, well, I, I can tell you that the, the significant shift happened last week when uh, President Erdogan was in New York for the United Nations meeting. And uh, to, to, until that day, uh, Turkish government was more cautious about involving in this, uh, uh, in this coalition. And that is also because of the hostages that was remain in the ice hand. And now after they have been released and uh, after apparently some negotiations that happened in New York, uh, Turkish government uh, came on board. And that was a strategic and very significant shift in Turkey's uh, position in this conflict. Well, there are so many competing interests in this fight. Um, many sides aligning with one another that may not, but ISIL is the obvious common link between all these different people. How does Turkey work with the Kurds in this situation? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. and and. Uh, only time will tell. Now, this um, decision complicates Tur Turkey's relationship with uh, local uh, Kurdish elements. Uh, there is a situation, there is some sort of a peace fire that, uh, ceasefire that is going on in Turkey with, with the Kurdistan Workers' Party, which is called PKK. And, and Turkey has close relationship with uh, Kurdistan regional government in northern Iraq. And there are some Kurdish elements in the northern Syria which has been fighting I IS uh, but also sometimes like staying neutral between the rebels and Assad government. And uh, so is now all of these come into play. And uh, uh, it is probably the most difficult thing to answer right now uh, the, about, the, about the situation or prospect of relationship between Turkey and the Kurdish elements on the ground. But do they feel like it was the lesser of two evils because you know, IS is such an important issue right now. Everyone is banding together it's, against. Yes, it seems that now the Kurdish people's priority is to save Kobani, uh, which uh, houses about like 400,000 people. So it's a, if there is a massacre, that would be a great massacre in the area. And uh, already 150,000 people passed Turkey. So this is the priority, and they think that Turkey should uh, play the upper hand to save these people. And uh, yes, there is a common enemy, uh, but in terms of the coalition between Kurds and Turks, I don't know how long this, this will last. President Erdogan has mm. always already, already warned uh, that military strikes are not a long-term solution against IS, but given Turkey's location in the region, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it seems obvious that he's trying to, to warn everyone that we have to find a better long-term solution. That's right. They he have has, to be involved. That's right. He has, uh, Turkey's position was to basically asking international community to build some sort of a coalition as such and then, and then address the, the, the conflict in Syria. And now this has happened and, and Turkey's reluctance somehow uh, uh, had no excuse to continue uh, from that time on. And then uh, Turkey is now joining and then uh, government is making some statements that are really in conflict with what they have said in the past. Uh, so now they are more willing to uh, uh, be proactive in the conflict, send, sending military uh, troops and, uh, and uh, kind of having some sort of a control in terms of resolving this conflict. So how do you see Turkey's role long term? Well, uh, Turkey had... Um, you know, in terms of for formation of the Turkish foreign policy after, during, during and after the Arab Spring was to have uh, uh, or leverage or increase its influence in the region. And uh, in the Syrian crisis, that didn't work well. And I think they are now seeing this, is, this could be a second opportunity uh, for them to use, uh, uh, to use this coalition, to use all these international community attention and everything to, again, retry, re-attempt to build this influence. But there is a very serious internal uh, debate going on whether Turkey is entering into some sort of a quagmire 
uh, or uh, or some sort of like opportunity. It's not clear. There's a great political opposition uh, in in the country. In that sense, country is divided, uh, seriously divided in this issue. Uh, but at the same time, refugees keep coming. Uh, the crisis uh, do not end, and the massacres are can happen any time. Uh, so, you know, regarding all these, I think Turkey is trying to decrease its um, basically control the damage as much as it, it can. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Fevzi Bilgin, we appreciate right. your time. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.